Coming up, Orioles Magic delivers a walk-off win, and Aaron Nola shuts out the Reds. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. Welcome and you're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB, local experts weighing in on the biggest stories in baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first list in every single weekday. We've got all of our MLB hosts here. They are ready to recap the action for you from yesterday. We are going to start out, though, in Baltimore for our biggest game. The biggest game. Orioles rookie Kyle Stowers got to reenact that situation that we have all had in our backyards as kids. Your team is down by one, two outs in the bottom of the ninth. And in fact, it may have played out even better in real life for him than he dreamed. Locked on Orioles and locked on White Sox have both sides of the dramatic finish. As Ben McDonald would say, how about you, Anthony Santander? He walks it off in the 11th and an incredible Orioles comeback 4-3 to three win over the White Sox to take the series in 11 innings. And obviously Santander was the hero. He had the big home run in the first inning to put the O's on the board, a two-run shot, drives in the walk-off winner in the 11th. But, I mean, you got to give it up to Kyle Stowers. The spot that he was in in this game, O's down 3-2, to two, two outs, bottom of the ninth, an 0-2 count with nobody on, and Stowers is facing one of the best closers in baseball in Liam Hendricks. Hendricks hangs an 0-2 curveball. Stowers smashes it for his first career home run to tie the game. O's down to their final strike. And the rookie Kyle Stowers comes up huge. What a moment for him. And the O's get a huge series win. I will recap it all coming up on Friday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. It was an ugly loss for the Chicago White Sox as they fell to the Baltimore Orioles 4-3 to in 11 innings. The White Sox committed three errors in the game, none more costly than Adam Engel's botched catch uh, in left field, foul territory in the ninth. It opened the door for a Baltimore Orioles game-tying home run. And then, of course, the Sox uh, lost it uh, in extras. White Sox lost the series. Uh, They could have made up some ground uh, with Cleveland losing, uh, but now they head home to the south side as they welcome the Arizona Diamondbacks for a three-game series. Johnny Cueto on the hill a Friday night. Aaron Nola made it look really easy with a complete game shutout for the Phillies as they completed the sweep over Cincinnati. Locked on Reds and locked on Phillies gives us the wrap-up from both sides. Thursday night brought marked improvement for Justin Dunn, but... The lineup was shut out. Hey, what's up? This is Jeff Carr from the Locked On Reds podcast. And the Reds are leaving Philadelphia with their tail tucked between their legs as Aaron Nola pitches a complete game shutout, completely dominates this Reds lineup all night long. But we saw a good game from Justin Dunn. Six innings, five strikeouts, only two runs allowed. You'll take that every time out. Six innings and two runs allowed from Justin Dunn. Hopefully we continue. We're going to dive more into what this start looked like for the Red Legs. And really, I mean, this is a good lineup. And I know that they're missing Bryce Harper in Philadelphia, but this is the kind of lineup you want to see that stat line for. Justin Dunn, well done on Thursday night. We're going to talk about that and continue continued interesting management of this Cincinnati Reds roster on tomorrow's Locked On Reds. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, bear with me. I'm in like the stairwell at my buddy's apartment right now, but what a game by your Philadelphia Phillies. Connor Thomas, your host of Locked On Phillies. The Phillies complete the four-game sweep. Aaron Nola with a masterful pitching performance. A complete game shutout win by Aaron Nola and the Philadelphia Phillies. The back half of the offense did it today with Garrett Stubbs and Mundo Sosa and all of those guys down the stretch. Bradley Zimmer, a great game by him out there at center. And the Phillies are hot right now. They keep picking up games, and tomorrow night, you know what it is. This is a very hot baseball team. Well, they get the MVP coming back. Bryce Harper returns to the team tomorrow night. Everything coming up, Philadelphia Phillies. 
and we got a four game sweep. I'll have to go home and grab Mr. Broom, and we will see the rest of you against the Pittsburgh Pirates for three games starting this weekend. How about another sweep, huh? Go Phils! Coming up, Jacob deGrom looks like his old self after a month back from his injury. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online gambling needs. Football is right around the corner, so if you want to get in on the action, just head over to betonline.net. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Jacob DeGrom made beating the Rockies look really easy yesterday in our best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Jacob DeGrom shut the Rockies lineup down in New York and Locked On Rockies explains how the former Cy Young winner made it look really simple against Colorado. Rock on Rockies fans, Paul Holden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. Well, it could have gone a lot worse, honestly, especially with the way that game started. It, we laid it all out in the podcast today. You can't get down early to DeGrom. You got to take advantage of any opportunity you get. And the Rockies don't do that. Ryan McMahon, the lone uh, run scored for the Rockies, but it's Jacob DeGrom. What are you going to do? There's only so much you can do. The Rockies actually play a pretty good ball game. Keep it close. Keep it tight. And uh, after being no hit for the first, what was it, four or five innings, uh, they do string it together a couple of hits, and Rymac uh, can at least uh, say, hey, I took Jacob DeGrom deep. Not really much to, to break down there. I mean, DeGrom's really good. The Mets are really good. The Rockies, they aren't. Uh, but we'll be talking about it all right here on Locked on Rockies. There has not been a ton for Angels fans to smile about lately. The Halos dropped their sixth straight game last night with an 8-3 loss to Tampa. Locked on Angels talks about the sweep and disappointing injury news as well for L.A. The Tampa Bay Rays swept the Angels. Jared Walsh is out for the rest of the season. And the Halos dropped their sixth game in a row. What's going on, everybody? It's John Frisch, one half of Locked on Angels. And... Other than a Taylor Ward home run where his grandma was being interviewed during that moment, there wasn't much to root about in this game. Patrick Sandoval had a decent outing. He went six innings pitched with five hits, and he gave up one earned run, but the five runs total, uh, one of those was only earned because there were so many defensive miscues behind him, and so there was just really one bad inning that spoiled this game for the Halos. They lose it 8-3. to three. And uh, we didn't have Mike Trout in the lineup trying to get him off his feet while they're on turf all this week. Shohei Otani had a nice RBI double. uh, But I think the takeaway for all Halo fans is Jared Walsh's issue. Uh, He's going to be put on the IL for the rest of the season with a thoracic outlet syndrome, usually a pitching injury. He's going to need surgery in order to get this fixed. Uh, Disappointing news for a disappointing season. It kind of explains Walsh's issues the last month and a half. But the Halos are headed to Toronto this weekend without their regular first baseman. And, uh, yeah, it's a sad situation in Anaheim. A lot of us just want to fast forward to the end of this season, to be honest, to see what happens with this new ownership. Mike and I are going to talk about all about it on Locked on Angels. So we hope you'll join us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. The Red Sox had every opportunity last night to close things out in the bottom of the ninth inning. They even had a shot in the 10th as well, but they couldn't quite get it done against Toronto. Locked on Red Sox goes over another disappointing loss. If this Red Sox team makes you want to rip your hair out, you're not alone. Though I will not do that because I have hair extensions and I could rip these out. Hey, it's Lauren from Locked on Red Sox. And the Boston Red Sox were swept by the Toronto Blue Jays. On Thursday night, a 6-5, 10-inning loss. The Red Sox had their opportunities. They had the bases loaded. They had nobody out. They could not win this game if their life depended on it. Another really frustrating loss for the Red Sox. And now they go into a series against the Rays. Just completely depleted at this point. Jake and I will break down everything from Thursday's game on our next episode of Locked on Red Sox. The Houston Astros able to take advantage of a struggling Twins team this week for three straight wins and locked on Astros has more on the finish to Houston sweep. Boom, just like that, the knockout punch. The Astros sweep the Twins, not only for the series, but for the season. Adios, Carlos. Have fun in the Twin Cities. The Astros are now even 
further in front of the American League with their 81st win on the season. And Trey, Boom Boom Mancini, or the Ice Trey, whatever you want to call him, this guy just continues to hit tanks. Alex Bregman continues his hot streak, and Yuli Gurriel even had a multi-hit game. The relievers came in after Luis Garcia struggled a little bit, but they still only managed to give up three runs all game to the Minnesota Twins. The Astros escape with a sweep, and they prepare to let, to have Trey Mancini face his old team, the Baltimore Orioles, who are vying for a playoff spot and have been one of the hotter teams since the All-Star break. Stay tuned in to Locked on Astros. I'm H. John Wheelhouse, and for Eric the Man Heisman, make sure you check us out on Apple, Google, Spotify, Odyssey. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, we're your team every day. Go Strohs. The Mariners were able to use a quality start from Marco Gonzalez to get by Cleveland locked on Guardians and locked on Mariners goes over the series opener. Did you watch the game today? Because if you didn't, all you have to do, honestly, is watch the first inning. Uh, today, the Cleveland Guardians lost 3-1 to one to the Seattle Mariners. All the runs are scored in the first inning. As a matter of fact, after that first inning, uh, from inning 2 through 7, Cleveland had one hit and one walk. And for... Innings two through six, Seattle had one hit and one walk. Cleveland made it interesting in the eighth. That was probably their best opportunity. Runner on first and second with two outs. Jose Ramirez struck out when Seattle brought in their closer, Andres Munoz, to close it out. Unfortunate loss of Tristan McKenzie on the mound. He was quite good outside of that first inning. They went walk, single, home run, and then the next 20 base runners, only two reach base. He actually didn't record an out before the home run. So all 20 of the next at-bats in between, that's where he uh, he was magnificent. It was just one home run, and unfortunately the Cleveland Guardians dropped this one. Make sure to check out Lockdown Guardians for a more in-depth take on the loss at for your still first place, Cleveland Guardians. Marco Gonzalez and Mitch Hanniger power the Mariners to a much-needed 3-1 victory over the Guardians on Thursday afternoon. This is Tidy Gonzalez, host of the Locked On Mariners podcast here. And coming off of a very disappointing loss to the Nationals yesterday, the Mariners were able to get off on the right foot in a crucial four-game set with the Guardians, thanks in large part to Marco Gonzalez, who goes six strong innings of work, just four hits allowed, just one earned run allowed in the first inning, strikes out four, with some of the best stuff and command we've seen out of Marco in quite some time. The Mariners needed a big performance out of one of their leaders, and they were able to get that, and they needed that because the offense was still not very good today. Mitch Hanniger, of course, led this game off with a three-run home run, but that's all the Mariners would get. In fact, they only recorded two more hits the rest of the way off of Tristan McKenzie and the Guardians' bullpen. Additionally, Ty France was unable to finish this game. He had to leave the game early with a bruised right calf. We'll see how long that takes him to recover from. We'll be talking more about this game on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Be sure to join us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you go check out Locked On MLB and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kanani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.